Hello, hello. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes here. Welcome one, welcome all. And there's my clock again. <laughs> Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Foundry. Yes, hello again. Oh, so many of you are learning all about these frameworks. This is fantastic. I love this. This is amazing. Let me share my screen as people come on in. Welcome. Welcome to the Foundry session. We have two more sessions, two more amazing sessions. Yes, GM, good morning to one, good morning to all. Two more sessions today. We have Foundry now, and then we have Truffle. Truffle is going to be with uh, Solange, which is going to be fantastic. So um, we're going to give a couple minutes for people to come in. And I'm really excited for this one because uh, this is one of the newer frameworks. This is one of the uh, the new ones. And look at that. Look at that logo. Oh, my goodness. Um, for, for some for some light humor here. Uh, I did like a, I did a foundry video on my YouTube and I thought my, my, my thumbnail was pretty sick. I tried to mimic the, tried to mimic the guy. Right. So I was trying to like flex and stuff, but he looks way more Jack than me. I gotta get, I gotta get as, as strong as the foundry logo. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> uh we're gonna get started in just a few minutes and oh uh for people who are who are showing up here um this foundry book is phenomenal um so i'm gonna put a, a link to it in here and this is what we're gonna be going over um to like get started and and like get all the installs and get everything down uh one of the things that's cool is most of the time when we do these i actually already have everything I thought that guy was you. <laughs> Most of the time when we do these, I already have kind of everything installed on my computer, everything already set up. For this one, uh, since I'm visiting my family for the weekend, uh, I'm actually I actually don't have any of this on my laptop. So I will be installing this with you. We, we will be doing it live, which will be interesting to say the least. So <laughs> hello, hello, welcome. Uh, we're a couple minutes in. Uh, so we can go ahead and and get started here. So welcome, welcome to the Foundry session. So there are two more sessions today. One's with Foundry with me, uh, and then we have, and this is my last session for the day. Then we have Soul on, and she will be showing you all Truffle. Um, and what we've been doing so far, and I know a lot of you came from the last workshop. Welcome again. Um, <laughs> I'm glad glad you're all here. And uh, the first 15 minutes is going to be the, the the same setup. Uh, we've been working with Remix, right? We've been working with this cloud IDE, right? And Remix is awesome. Remix is great for running our smart contracts, but it has some limitations, right? We, whenever we deploy stuff, we have to like press all these buttons and like we have to we have to do things ourselves. And we're engineers, right? We don't want to have to press all these buttons and do all this stuff. So um, there are frameworks out there like Foundry, like Truffle, like Hardhat, like Brownie, which automate this process to make everything a lot easier. And it's these frameworks, which is what every really successful protocol uses um, to be successful, right? And these are how they, they run their development environments. Uh, oh, and, and yes, that's why I'm not on camera here because I'm, I'm visiting my family for the weekend. So a uh, slightly different setup here. Um, <laughs> um, but in any case, uh, so here's here's DeFi Llama, which 
is a breakdown of a lot of these, uh, a lot of the most popular uh, DeFi protocols and how much money they have in them. Um, for all these protocols, you can actually go right to their uh, to their GitHubs and like kind of see what they're using. Now, a lot of them aren't using Foundry because Foundry is is a much newer framework, um, and it's created by the Paradigm team. Um, and what Foundry's claim to fame is uh, is it's it's not JavaScript, it's not Python. You can write your stuff, and most people have been doing it in Bash so far. But really, whatever you want. But the biggest the biggest addition is going to be the speed differences. So um, you get mass, and so they compare to uh, to to DAP, which is like a Foundry type thing. But uh, this Foundry and Forge tool is really really fast. Um, probably one of the fastest ones out there. So if you have like hundreds of thousands or hundreds or thousands of tests, um, you're going to see a, a long wait time on other frameworks versus Foundry is going to be a lot faster. And Foundry aims to do everything in Solidity. Um, and it's they're still building some new stuff, but it's a really, really cool tool um, and definitely up and coming and getting really powerful. So uh, a quick question here. Is Anchor something like Hard Hat Brownie, et cetera? I see that it's in the calendar too later. Yes, I don't think that's today though, right? What, what um, I made the calendar. I don't even know the calendar. Uh, <laughs> Shane, uh, hack, hack Uh, yeah. So, uh, Anchor is uh is another framework for but for Solana. Oh yeah, six thirty p.m. Yep. So the Anchor is. Uh, oh oh, sorry. We we do have Anchor later today. I totally forgot. So Anchor is totally different than anything we've done today or we will do today. Uh, it's for Solana development, which Solana isn't Solidity. Um, so definitely check that out if you want to write Solana smart contracts. Patrick, is there any framework for using with Golang? I actually don't think so. Um, that's a good... There might be. Uh, if there is, uh, I would love to know about it. Great question. Anchor is Anchor is not in Google Calendar. Well, it should be. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. It is on hack.chain.link. Um, you can check it out there. Anyways, um, cool. So Paradigm... Uh, excuse me, Foundry, really cool tool, really fast. We're going to be going through getting set up here. Now, what I'm going to be using um, for doing all the coding here is this thing called Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to pop a link to this. Yeah, and Harry's doing the anchor one. Yep, yes, Tippy. Uh, and this code, uh, this is this coding editor where we're going to write all of our code uh, for working with Foundry. Uh, this is, a, this is what... It, it, when we work with Remix, we do all of our code here. This is kind of a more professional. Um, I don't want to use the word professional because Remix is definitely professional. Absolutely love the Remix team. Uh, but this is a more modern uh, development environment. Um, and for those of you on Win uh, Windows, I definitely recommend using uh, WSL. So this is, stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux. And it's a way to run Linux commands on your Windows machines. So if you're running... Um, a Windows machine right now, and you want to be able to follow along with us exactly as we're doing here, uh, you definitely want to run this. And most of the world runs their coding environments through a Linux environment anyways. So I definitely recommend you getting familiar with Linux, um, you, you trying out WSL, because I promise you, I promise you, your life is going to be better. If you're on a Mac or on a Linux, you're already good. Mac terminals and stuff are based off of Linux. So um Cool. Any, any, and this is the the setup that we're going to be going through um, for uh, for working with Foundry here. So, uh, any questions uh, about any of that uh, before we jump in? What was the team building event? I couldn't attend that one. It was a event for building teams. Um, uh, you'll you'll have to go to the next Chainlink Hackathon and uh, and go to that because those are usually a lot of fun. I came across some incompatibilities using Brownie uh, between versions Solidity, for example. Blah, blah blah. How can I fix it? Uh, can I call two versions or more at the same time? You can. Um, uh, you might have to ask this question in, in the Brownie uh, Chainlink mix because we're we're working on Foundry here. I assume it's coming to YouTube too. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, definitely get uh, WSL. No, uh, having Windows is absolutely fine. Just, just, just work with WSL. That's all. Okay, cool. So this is Foundry. Um, this is this Foundry book, and this is what we're going to be getting started with. And this is, uh, let me open up Visual Studio Code here. So, excuse me. Let me just switch screens. Cool. 
And then this is my Visual Studio Code. Let me just reset this. And when you open this up, you have this terminal section, which is this area down here where you can run commands. You can open it up by doing terminal, new terminal in your bar, and you'll be able to see uh, your terminal down here. And then you also do keyboard shortcuts, which is how you do this fast stuff, like what I'm doing right here. Uh, now, when you're in here, uh, and ignore that command I just ran. When you're in here, when you're in your 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 terminal, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder for working with Foundry. So we're going to do mkdir, and I'm going to call it Foundry Play, but you can call it whatever you want. Uh, mkdir stands for make directory, and we're going to change directory, aka with the cd, uh, into Foundry Play. And in your terminal, if you type a couple of letters to do with a directory or file, and then hit tab, it'll autocomplete. Now we want to open up this folder. We want to open up our Visual Studio Code inside of this folder. So we can do code, period, or we can do file, open folder, and then this folder. And let me just switch. Let me just switch screens again to the folder I just opened. All right, cool. And now we're in here. And now in our terminal, if we were to like create a new file, um, in our terminal, we're doing like touch high.txt. Uh, we now can see high.txt in this like explorer section over here, which shows us all the folders inside this directory, which right now I just created high.txt, which doesn't have anything in it. I'm going to right click it now and delete it. Goodbye. And now we have a blank uh, foundry section, which is great. And one more thing, I feel like I'm just full of one more things uh, for all these sessions this morning is the kind of ultimate version of this uh, is this is going to be this foundry starter kit uh, which does have a gitpod button um, this is kind of like a fuller example of working with foundry in your smart contract code and, and has tests it has scripts it has kind of everything that you need uh, to get starting it going and foundry is going to release a new deploy feature fairly soon so it'll get a massive upgrade whenever that comes out um, if that's confusing to you, don't worry about it for now. Just caught up on all of yesterday's workouts. Woo! Welcome. Uh, have a better understanding of what Chainlink is now. Excellent. No clue what Foundry is, though. Well, great. That's why you're here. <laughs> Foundry is a repo to help you write code fast. So, um, we're in our code editor. Let's get started, you know, installing Brownie, or excuse me, installing Foundry and getting going. Now, um, on, uh, there's kind of there's a command in the Foundry book that I'm going to run. Oh, I already ran it. Whoops. Um, to to install Foundry, and it's this curl command: curl l foundry paradigm x y z pipe into bash. And I just ran that. You can copy paste that from the getting started installation of. You absolutely came to the right place. Yes, you did. Um, getting started installations. You can literally just copy paste it, run it in your terminal. Uh, and that's how you can install. And like I said, we kind of got a fun little thing here where I will also be, you know, running this for the first time. So if there's issues, we can, we'll be able to see them together. And once you install that, you should have this foundry up command. Uh, or not. <laughs> Maybe you won't have the foundry. Oh, excuse me. Um, uh, I need to kill my terminal, reopen my terminal. And foundry up, not found. Oh well, so good. So we are running into uh, we are running to the to the errors ourselves. Your command not found. So give me one second here. Some real time debugging. Let's go. I think you need to source your ZCH. You need to add to your path. You have to source the package first. That sounds about right. 
Oh, this is even better when you uh when you work together. Yeah, I was like, we find the missing. <laughs> I could also just download from source. I need to source the package first. Run source. Is it in here? Opening a new terminal work for me. It was found then. Source. So I need to add it to my path. So where is it added? So I piped it into Bash, right? Thanks for the live debugging on. Thanks for bearing with me. So we curled it, piped it into Bash, downloaded it, installing Foundry up. Where do we download it? Detected your preferred shell is, is Bash and added Foundry up to path. Runs. Oh, duh. I need to do this. Oh, hello. Uh, it, it told me what, right what to do. There we go. <laughs> this is why you should read the error codes, huh? So a nice little uh, debugging session for us. <laughs> this are issues for Mac. Oh, these bugs, bugs. I love this. Well, uh, so so <laughs> step one of debugging anything: uh, read the error codes. That's uh, that's that's gonna, that's that's the takeaway. <laughs> that's the takeaway from this session: uh, read the error codes. Um, Read the error codes. <laughs> One second here. Oh. <laughs> please, please, please run this command. And I was like, what do I need to do? Why isn't it working? All right, cool. So once we have it, once we have it up, uh, once we have it installed, um, we now are able to uh, actually get started like working with Foundry. So what we can do is we can do forge init, and this will create uh, uh, all of our code inside of our, our folder here, right? This is similar to um, to brownie init or uh, like the, the hardhead command, right? And in our folder here, now we can also see what's in here by typing ls. We can see we have some stuff in here. So .github is for running like a GitHub CI CD pipeline. If you don't know what that means or like working with GitHub actions, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it for now. Lib, this is kind of like, like a node modules or like a Python pick packages place. This is where any like solidity code that you downloaded for your project, any external project is gonna live. So this is kind of like where our, excuse me, the dependencies for our project are. Source is where our contracts are actually gonna live. And now this is different. This is different from um, like Hard Hat and Brownie, which used uh, contracts as their folder name. In Foundry, source is kind of the, or SRC, excuse me, source or SRC. It's kind of like your main folder, if you will. And it even gives you kind of like this default contract.sold, like a, a real basic contract. Now, tests, this is where Foundry is very different from. Uh, Foundry is very different from Brownie, very different from Hardhead, different from Truffle. All of our tests are actually going to be written in Solidity instead of like in uh, JavaScript or Python or et cetera. So Foundry has got the idea of like, okay, everything, everything's Solidity or everything, I think they have Viper support. I'm not sure if they, they do yet. Uh, everything's Solidity, but everything like your, your blockchain language, which is really cool. So even your tests are going to be your blockchain language. Now, dot .git ignore is gonna be uh, for GitHub, .git modules is gonna be for GitHub. Git modules is actually how you're gonna install stuff. So this is like kind of similar to a package.json uh, if, if you are familiar with, with hardhab. Uh, and then foundry.toml, this is kind of like configurations for the entire project. And you can see like in this default section, we're saying the source is gonna be source. If you wanted to use contracts, you could change the contracts. Out is where we, we output stuff and our libraries are gonna be in lib. So, um, so th that's kind of the breakdown of uh, this code. Now, let's let's update this contract to make this a little bit more interesting, rather than just like contract contract. So, in this contract, we're, let's make uh, let's do a unit two fifty six public number. 
we'll do a function uh, set number uh, un256 a new number this will be a public variable and then we'll just do new number equals number so we just updated this contract to be a little bit more interesting right so we have our, our contract whose name is contract with capital c uh, we have a, a global public variable called number in storage and we have a single function called set number which all it's doing is going to update that number now in remix when we after we write our code what's the first thing we normally do well we compile it to make sure it's all good uh in forge excuse me in foundry we can do that as well um but instead of using uh instead of using like foundry keywords uh foundry comes with two commands it comes with forge dash dash help uh just kidding it doesn't come with forge in the wrong terminal again space hello do i need a source again that's annoying um i will update that later so oh, you'd, you'd have to move your um your path to whatever gets sourced on your on your computer um uh, that's 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 weird to explain right now um without me like doing a whole bunch of stuff um yeah i'm, I'm just gonna say don't worry about that for now if, if you run into that issue just run source before you do anything um but then you you should learn how to move your path into to whatever whatever default um shell automatically gets configured so i know that wasn't super clear uh, but basically just if you run into that issue just run source a bunch for now and then learn how to not have to do that later <laughs> um but cool so we can do so it comes with forge dash dash help and it also comes with cast now cast is a package that allows us to kind of interact with the blockchain and it's got a ton of these commands right all these commands are part of cast so it allows us to abi encode check the base fee the block the block number call chain data um all this information about the blockchain and then forge is this command that allows us to um everything that we need to do with building and, and testing and are deploying our, our smart contracts here. So if we want to compile this that we just created, we can do forge uh, build. And you'll see it's going to compile. If we don't have this version of Solidity installed, it's going to go ahead and install it. It's going to compile our contracts and then send it. And again, if you see warnings like this, similar to Remix, this is fine. Um, but, uh, it seems like a bad warning though. Functional state mutability can be restricted to view. Oh, it's cause it's backwards. Well, now, <laughs> um, and it'll compile our code like that. But yeah, if you get a warning like that, it means your code's still compiled and it's just a warning saying, hey, like maybe you want to check this out, which was good because I checked it out and it was like, oh, well, those are backwards. So let me check the comments. I'm sure I'm, I know for a fact you you all uh, called me out on that. Yep. Yeah, you did. <laughs> right, I'm checking. I'm checking the comments out right now. Um, OK, so a couple questions here. Can you please explain what we're wrong and how you fixed it? Yeah. So. Um, Forge and Foundry, they look for, uh, there's this environment variable called path um, that a lot of packages use, like a lot of things use it. And basically they say, okay, where should I be looking for your installed code? Um, and we have to tell it, hey, like, and, and, it, and they usually will check for this path variable. And so we just have to, whenever we add a new package that might be located in a different spot, we need to tell um, that we need to add it to our path. We just say, hey, also, um, you can find this installed uh, stuff here as well. And so running source, running that source command um, uh, uh, basically did that. So when we installed Foundry, it added you know the location to where path is and then added to our bash RC. And then we had to run source to like update it. So if you're if you're struggling with some of that stuff, um, I, I would it's I feel like it's a, it's a longer conversation than what we're gonna have time to cover here. Um, but yeah, like creating, creating a dot bash underscore profile, 
or a dot batch rc or, or just googling like how to automatically you know have terminal grab dot batch rc or something will, will help you out there sorry that, that sorry that that's not like as clear as it should be the the, the answer is kind of long uh i missed the registration but this workshop are a lot of fun and very helpful thanks for doing them oh yeah excellent yeah you you can still register um you can still register like the it's a it keeps going no matter your experience exactly you ma no matter your experience don't assume you know read the air don't don't be a jerk like me and not read the air i killed the terminal and ran found up again work for me excellent yes yeah, so why did it say to run source because i just what what i just said um he said, source, I can't see any folder for deployment. We should. Did you just uh, did you just say test and solidity? I did. Crazy. Uh, number equals, yes, you all did call me on that. Excellent. <laughs> um, I'm not, uh, Tippy, I'm not doing any conventions for, for these beginner workshops, so that's why. Yep, you all called me up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are there any tools, libs to help with test coverage of contracts? There's a lot of useful best practices. Yes, I'm not going to go over them here. Um, if you want to check the the Foundry starter kit, that's going to be where you're going to see a lot of best practices. So go check that out for best practices. Uh, does it employ ganache for local chain simulation or something else? Great question. Okay, so no. So um, Forge right now doesn't, or Foundry doesn't have their own. Um, so Foundry is based off of this thing called DAP Tools. DAP Tools does have their own local chain simulation. Uh, Foundry doesn't yet. I believe they are working on it, though. Does this installation work on Mac M1 chips? I have no idea. I'm sorry. Code is wrong. Yes, thank you. Um, DS test not found. Do you have, Freddy, uh, you might need to have Git installed as well. It compiles very fast. Yes, you might already notice it compiles really fast. Your tests are also going to be crazy fast. Yes, it works on M1. Okay, great. Oh, someone says no to M1. Um, Foundry's working fine. Please tell us about test coverage. Yep, check out the uh, check out the Foundry starter kit. There's going to be more information in there. That's just a warning at the bottom of the solution page. Foundry. Yep. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. So we're up to speed. All right. Great. So this is how we compile our code here. Now, in in the hard hat and in the um, in the brownie uh, workshop so far, we showed you how to actually write scripts to deploy these. I'm not going to do that here. And why am I not going to do that here? Well, it's because I'm going to show you how to do that. And then in like a few months or whenever it gets released, Foundry is going to release their deployment process, uh, their deployment framework, and it's all going to change. So I'm not going to show you how to do that here because it's all going to change very soon. Um, but it's going to be super, super sick. So like imagine like writing a deploy script in Solidity. That's going to be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, the, the idea of Foundry is like everything, 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 everything is like written in Solidity or whatever, you know, whatever other, other L1 that you want to do. Now, the other uh, big thing about uh, about Foundry is going to be its tests. Okay, so for tests, um, you can just run forge test and tests. And if we pull up our tests, you, we can see that we just ran the tests here. It ran this contract.t.sol. And sorry, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, which we pretty much didn't do anything in here, right? So we ran this setup command, which didn't do anything. And then we ran this test example function. And what's cool is it also tells us how much gas we used for these. Uh, so we use 190 gas here. Uh, and all of our tests will tell us how much gas we use, which is really, which is obviously really, really powerful, right? So um, to create a new test, and we'll go over this more in depth um, in the testing with Foundry workshop next week. To, go, uh, to, to do something more interesting here, uh, what we can do in our test folder is we can actually like deploy, um, deploy our script in here um, ourselves. So the way that we actually will deploy our, uh, deploy, excuse me, deploy our contract is in here, is first we're gonna import it. We're going to do import um, dot dot slash, uh, what do we call it? Contract dot sol. Import dot dot slash. Excuse me. Dot dot slash FRC. Contract dot sol. We're going to import it in here uh, and we're going to deploy it in this setup command. Now, 
We also import this DS test test.sol. This comes with um, uh, our, our founder here. And it's a package that like helps us run tests. One of the really cool, sorry about the clock. One of the really cool things about Foundry is that you can actually like change your blockchain and change all this stuff about your blockchain right in Solidity. We're not going to go over that here. We're going to go over that uh, later on in the week when we go deeper into um, when we go deeper into testing here. But what we can do is we could say um, contract my contract. Um, make it public a contract as a global variable so now we're saying hey we have a global variable named my contract of type contract of type you know this contract here and in our setup folder excuse me in our setup um command here we do my contract equals new uh contract what this does is it's uh it's it'll just deploy a, a variable called my contract of type contract um, as like the first step for us running the test here. And then what we can do is in our test example, we can do something like my contract dot number um, equals equals zero, right? Because it should be initialized to zero. Maybe we'll change the name with a test initialized 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 correctly right something like that and now if i run this test again forge test and file and run uh operator equal equal not compatible types function view external and int const zero it's because i need to actually call the function instead of just calling the instead of not calling the function um and you'll see passing here right so we see my contract dot number equals zero is true right and if i were to change this back to one it would break it says failed one failed and it says how much gas it costs to actually fail it so let's put it back to zero run for test again and boom it's passing and we can see how much gas it it does here now what we can do then is we can also do like my contract dot what do we call it set number seven 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 or seven 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 and then we'll do asserts true my contract and this this assert true function is coming from ds test so we're saying contract test is ds test it's because we're getting it from ds test we're gonna say assert true uh my contract equals equals seven 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 we'll run this again Oh my gosh, excuse me, my contract dot number equals 777. We'll run this again. And we see true, right? And we see it costs a lot more gas now. So one of the really cool things about Foundry is it comes built in with this gas thing. Most other uh, uh, frameworks also have this, like Brownie has this, Hard Hat has a plugin where you can add this. Um, Foundry has this kind of built in and, and happens automatically. And you'll notice this these happen incredibly, incredibly fast. And that's really one of Foundry's biggest calls uh, Calls here is that it's so stinking fast because everything happens in Solidity. Uh, everything happens kind of like in this on-chain. But this is how you'll, you'll write your minimalistic tests for Foundry. And it's one of Foundry's like biggest, biggest value adds. It also has built-in fuzzing and a whole bunch of other stuff. And once the deploy uh, bit comes out, that's going to be absolutely, uh, absolutely fantastic. So. I'm coming back to questions now. Uh, any questions about any of this stuff? Uh, let me see. Is Foundry target audit auditory or Rust devs like well, like JS for Hardet and Pi for Brownie? If not, then who should choose this framework besides Rust devs? So you don't need to know, this is a really good question. You don't need to know any Rust to work with Foundry. Uh, you don't need to know any Rust, right? The goal of Foundry is to, is hey your entire workflow should be in in solidity it should be in viper or etc right so the goal for um so i think foundry devs are people who you know they really like really uh really really you know these really fast um 
these really fast frameworks, uh, they don't want to have to do anything outside of what can be done in a smart contract. So I think for a lot of projects, people are going to want to, you know, reach out to, to, to call things with APIs, to do random stuff, to do stuff outside the blockchain. And that's, you'll need a regular programming language to do that, right? You can't, um, you couldn't like, uh, you, you couldn't like deploy your code to, you know, a front end. You couldn't like call um, an API to like check whether, you know, um, some price was was the same or something. You, you can't do a lot of stuff you can do in a traditional coding environment when everything is kind of in the solidity piece. So you're, you're, you'll need a traditional coding environment there. And if you want your, your entire coding environment to be Python, maybe use Brownie. If you want your entire coding part, uh, environment to be uh, JavaScript, maybe use hard app, but yeah, Foundry is, is really fast. And, um, and it's something I recommend for anybody who's like, Hey, you know what? I just want to do everything in solidity. Um, and, uh, it's really, again, at the end of the day, whatever framework you want to use, pick one and use it, right? If you're like, Hey, Foundry seems really cool. I want to use Foundry. Great. Use just Foundry. Source DS test test uh, that's all not found. File import callback not supported. Um, if you, you definitely need Git to work with this, so make sure Git is installed. Um, and you can check to see if you have Git installed with Git dash dash help. You get an output like this uh, because Foundry does install a lot of its libraries from GitHub. So you might have an issue with Git uh, if you're getting that. If you get that. Um, make an issue on the foundry repo or or the chain like mix or excuse me or the foundry starter kit uh if you're getting that yeah it's all solidity and very fast a lot of people love it for that so if if this is your if you are like hey like that sounds awesome to me foundry is probably the the framework for you it's very fast <laughs> it's very fast uh, I didn't get which local blockchains can be currently used with Foundry. Ganache, Hardhat, another one. So right now, um, I mean, you can use so you can use any local blockchain with Foundry. It just doesn't come built in with any right now. Um, so Foundry was based off of this other framework called DAP Tools, which did have its own local blockchain. Um, I think the Foundry team is working on their own as well. Uh, something to keep in mind is Foundry is definitely the, the newest uh, uh framework here and, and is building a lot of this stuff as we speak and they're building very quickly um but yeah whenever they whenever they ship something it's usually very cool it's usually very good so they don't uh but you you can you could hook foundry up to any of these yourself but it doesn't come built in with any great question what about scripts for deployment and and this is why i didn't go over so right now most scripts are written like in bash and if you look in the the chain link, uh, excuse me, the, the foundry starter kit in the smart contract kit repo that I, that I posted, uh, all of the deployment scripts are kind of like bash prompts. Uh, I've, I've written some before where it's all bash and it's all automated bash and, and it's kind of annoying um, writing scripts in bash. Um, but that's just kind of what it is right now because foundry is a command line tool and bash is a command line language. Um, but they are building a deploy um, functionality where you can actually deploy your scripts in Solidity, which sounds crazy. You're deploying your Solidity with Solidity, um, <laughs> which sounds really crazy, but they, they are working on building that right now. This is amazing. I'm really attached to Remix, but I have a new perspective right now. And uh, uh, Claudio, when you come to the testing and the more advanced Foundry workshops we're going to be hosting, uh, you're going to see how as your project gets bigger, it just makes more and more sense to, to switch to a tool like this. Did you say deploy functionality is available with Foundry yet? If that's the case, do you recommend using a different framework for the hackathon? So um, I'll show you in just a second how we how we deploy stuff in the Chainlink, excuse me, in the Foundry starter kit. So you can still deploy stuff. You absolutely still can. I'm just saying that they're coming out with like a better, a better deployment uh, tool very soon. These are awesome questions, by the way. Uh, does it compile? I think it's an IDE or I have the same area. Patrick, could you create a separate Discord channel and Chainlink official server for presentation discussions? That way we could take issues like this DS test offline. Um, good question. Maybe we can do that. Um, well, <clears throat> I want others who, who run into the same issue to be able to talk about it, though. Um, 
and I would love to, I would love to uh, have this captured though. Like, uh, like, like in my mind, this should be not on discord. Like if you run, if you're running that issue, that should be someplace um, like in the real world, like that somebody else could Google it, Google your exact same error and come up to your conversation. So stack exchange, Ethereum, uh, the foundry issues section or the chain link, uh, excuse me, the foundry starter kit issues template. Those are all places that you should look. But okay, great questions here. Now, so that's kind of the, the super, super like high level overview of foundry and what foundry does. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad a lot of people think it's really cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, we're going to grab this foundry starter kit and we're going to, um, we're going to walk through this really briefly and this is uh this is what's kind of like a, a boilerplate for working with foundry uh that has a lot more stuff to it right and it even has a git pod button actually if you want to um 20 work with uh to git pods let me even just show you uh let me let me switch over to that let me show you what that looks like so this is the repo here and it's got this open with git pod button and you can actually click it and if you go, uh, you can open this with Git pod and you can just do everything like kind of in a cloud environment. So if you don't have any of this installed yourself, you can just run it like in a browser um, yourself. You can run Foundry in the browser if you're having a hard time installing stuff. So, uh, but this is what we're gonna be cloning and working with here. Let me, let me switch screens again. All right, cool. And I'm gonna to have to switch screens again in a second. So if you're in the Foundry Play repo, you know, uh, CD change directory down a repo, we're going to uh, git clone. We're gonna write git clone. And we're just gonna paste that URL for the Foundry starter kit. We're gonna CD into the Foundry starter kit. And again, I'm, I'm typing kind of the first couple of letters and then hitting tab for to autocomplete. And then we can hit code period inside this folder, or we can do file open folder to open this up. And I'm gonna switch screens one more time. One more time. Well, one more time for the time being. <laughs> and, and great. And now we're inside of this foundry starter kit, which um, like I said, it, it has a couple of more things in here. Okay, so dot GitHub is gonna be the same. Uh, there's just some more more workflows in here. Dot VS Code is a way for helping format some stuff. You can you can kind of ignore that. Image is this super sick Chainlink Foundry Fusion logo, which is like super cool. Uh, lib, this is where all of those packages uh, are, right? And you'll see there's a number of additional libs here. Now, one in in particular that's really interesting is this one called Soulmate. Um, so Soulmate is kind of like uh, like an Open Zeppelin alternative. If you're familiar with Open Zeppelin, really cool package Soulmate. Um, but in here we do have a scripts folder, and you'll see these are all with like .sh. So these are all Bash scripts. So like we do have a deploy script here, which we can use to deploy stuff. So for people saying like, hey, how do you deploy stuff if the Foundry new deploy thing isn't done yet? And it's like, okay, well this is how you do it. And we're going to go over that. And then, of course, we have source with a whole bunch of, you know, chain link contracts, ones that you should be uh, very familiar with at this point. We have Adapt RC, which um, is kind of a holdover from the compatibility with DAP tools. Most of this you're going to do in your uh, hardhat.toml now instead of, the, instead of that. So it's kind of being depre depreciated. Dot env dot example for environment variables, git ignore, git modules. Those are the same. Uh, these two files are for working with git pod, so you can kind of ignore them. And then we have a whole bunch of JavaScript stuff in here. Um, one of the uh, whole bunch of JavaScript stuff in here, like prettier, soul hint, heart, you'll, you'll see a hard hat config, all this stuff. Uh, the reason that's in there now is because if you want, because like I said, Foundry doesn't right now have its own like runtime environment. So you can hook it up to work with Foundry, to work with Hard Hat, so you can have your own kind of development chain. And um, in the README, it'll explain more on how to do that. Uh, now, the biggest thing in here is this this make file. So make files are, are kind of ways to uh, to work with code, to install code, and to to kind of like create scripts, right? So 
in, in our make file, all of these, uh, all of these commands, all these one-liners on the side here are, are called uh, targets. And then on the left, on the right, we have like dependencies. Sorry about the clock. Uh, and we can run these as uh, as commands here, kind of similar to like a package JSON scripts file. So if, if I wanted to run, um, if I wanted to run this build thing, which looks like it does forge clean, forge build, it does some optimization stuff, I would just run make build and it would run this command for us, right? So it would compile, fail to resolve file. Well, I, I well, actually, yeah. But, and it failed because I didn't run make yet. Um, because the first thing you should do whenever you download this is to run make, which was which is what will in, install our dependencies. If you run make and it detects a make file, it'll go, okay, cool. What is the first uh, target that I should run? Okay, it's all, and then it'll run this all command which this all command runs the clean command, the remove command, the install command, which the install command is the is kind of the important one. So I'll run make here. And you'll see it's doing a whole bunch of stuff. So it's installing packages, it's deleting packages, it's, it's setting up our repo um, so that we can actually work with it. It's installing all of our dependencies, basically, basically. Okay, now I can run make build, and it still failed. Check configured remappings. I think my make failed actually. Make again. So we're downloading all these GitHub repos here. Forge update a fatal need need it. Oh. Oh shit. Sorry, one more time because I deleted the error. <laughs> Forge update needed a single revision. Unable to find current origin master revision in submodule pass lib chainlink brownie contracts. So uh, forge update. So forge update failed for some reason. Right? If I run forge update again, he's a single revision. I'm able to find current forge and master revision submodule path. So we go to lib. Interesting. Make silk. Message file directory silk. Uh, Ah, so we need Nix ENV to download the Silk version, and we don't have Nix ENV installed. So, we would need to install Nix ENV. Oh, well, this is good. We have to update our. Uh, We have to update our README so that uh, people can install Nix CMV. Because right now it's probably not going to be able to grab the proper Silk version. Because now if I do build, it's failing because you can't find Forge STD. STD.lib.sol. Oh no, this is actually because Forge STD changed. So here's what we're gonna do for that actually. Well, this is good. We're finding a uh, finding something that I need to do to update this. A little a little bit more debugging in, in pro. So in the submodules path, we're actually just gonna get rid of Forge STD for now, because it looks like that's being updated a bunch. And then in here, we're going to delete this, delete Forge STD. We don't even need it. So we're getting rid of it in our submodules. We're getting rid of it in remappings.txt. And then we'll see if it's in foundry.toml. I think, I think now we can run make build. Okay. 
No, we do have. Oh, just kidding. We do have it. All right, so I'm gonna have to go back and update this this repo. So this is good. It's good that we did this live. Um, it wasn't the next thing. It's that uh, the the standard library changed a little bit. So everyone's gonna get the same error. Woo. Um, uh, but yeah, this is really good. If uh, if somebody wants to actually go to um, the Foundry Starter Kit, because this yeah, I'm really glad we found this. Goes go to the Foundry Starter Kit and make an issue um, defining this uh, so that I can go back and fix it. Or and if somebody wants to uh, to uh, to update it, great. This should be a pretty easy fix. Uh, just like changing the four DSTD version or changing the DS test version or something like that. Um, that'd be awesome uh, and really helpful. But yeah, once we update that, um, then we can just run all of the, the scripts and do everything uh, to actually deploy and work with this. And, and I'm just going to show you the, uh, the front end here. Well, I'm really glad we found that before uh, before a ton of people got really frustrated and were like, why is this not working? Um, but yeah, what we can do for actually deploying, you'll see uh, if you want to deploy to like a real network, you'll have to go through the setup, getting an RPC URL from Alchemy, private key, constructor arguments, contract, etc. And you can just run bash scripts deploy network, uh, deploy underscore network.sh. And then it'll prompt you. It'll prompt you for your RPC URL. Uh, it'll prompt you which contract do you want to deploy? What are the constructor arguments? and then insert the private key to actually uh, deploy to. And then here's kind of like a full example. So it's it's a prompt-based deployment here, and then it'll be the same for scripts. So there'll be bash scripts, but you use forge and, and, and cast uh, to do so here. So, and then there's some to-do improvements here, because again, this uh, uh, foundry is constantly being improved. It's being improved very rapidly. I mean, all these packages and all these Frameworks are being proved, but Foundry is is very quickly trying trying to you know push out repos and packages um, to get. I think it recently got what's called feature parity with DAP tools, meaning like it has all the same things that DAP tools has. But um, yeah, I'm glad we found this. Uh, glad we found this in real life. And uh, yeah, if people think that think the real time troubleshooting is is helpful, um, let me know because I'm more than happy to in the future come with a ton of issues and try to debug them in real life <laughs> with you with you all i've heard that before that real-time uh, troubleshooting is really good but yeah it, this it looked like this one was pretty uh pretty straightforward we just got to like fix the the packages so um love the real time all right good to know so um we have a few minutes left here and then i want to give some time to swap over to soul uh solange's truffle um workshop here so we can take a couple of questions and then we'll jump off. So hopefully this was really helpful. Oh, oh and also per usual, um, please, please, please uh, uh, fill out the community type, uh, type form. Give some feedback. Let us know if you like this, if you didn't like this, if you thought this was helpful, if you didn't think it was helpful, et cetera. Like I said, if you can make um, an issue on the repo or um, if I don't find time today, I'll find time Monday to fix the Foundry Starter Kit. Uh, so that it works or if somebody wants to make a pr to fix it that would be great too it should be a, it should be a really like a like a couple lines changed right it should be real real simple to fix um but yeah any any other questions comments thoughts okay we have some questions here i've been writing up issues on github all morning i can redo my local environment and do a write up there is it up for a push request or just post the issue so um most repos are always up for pull requests, uh, but not push requests, right? Like you, you typically don't want to allow anybody just to push code to your repo. That sounds like not good, uh, but pull requests, yes. So if you see on in here, there's this pull request section uh, where you can actually um, do what's called a pull request. You're basically saying, hey, can you pull in my code? Uh, so doing a pull request or just an issue. So great. I've been writing up issues on GitHub all morning. Excellent. Getting really good at that. That is really good. Once I've developed my contracts with Foundry, can I call the contract methods from a program written in a language different from Solidity? Perhaps Foundry provides an API. Great question. So once you deploy your contracts to any network, you can call them the con those contracts the exact same way you would do it with, with any other language, with Python, with JavaScript, with Golang, etc. So once you've developed your contracts and you've deployed your contracts, you can call them with any traditional, typical, you know, Web3 programming language. Great question. 
Interested in further explanation on the connection between Brownie and Foundry? More examples of how you would use it. Um, so Brownie and Foundry are, are different tools, right? So they, they both are smart contract development frameworks. Um, but yeah, they're, they're different. Like you wouldn't, you, you could use them together. Um, I probably wouldn't right now. Um, they're, they're just different. Uh, they're, they both do similar things. They're both smart contract development frameworks. That is very similar of not pushing your function or withdraw rather a pull function. I think you're talking about push over pull for, for solidity, which yeah, which is right. Yep. So cool. Um, any other questions here? Any other thoughts, comments, questions here? And yeah, please, please take that feedback form. It is incredibly helpful for us. Any other questions, thoughts, comments, questions here, or we'll, we'll jump off and uh, hopefully see all you at Solange's um, truffle workshop. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to jump off now. Thank you all so much. Oh, uh, any recommended resources for Foundry? Yes, that Foundry book that I sent you. Get foundry.sh. Um, that one's really good. Get foundry.sh, and I'll post it in the chat. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Um, for those of you who are going over to the Truffle one, hope to see you there, and uh, good luck at the hackathon. It's going to be an amazing hackathon. All right, bye, all.